I'm Sister Vasa, and I'm having my coffee, my Austrian coffee, before going to work here in the city of Vienna in Austria. I drink my coffee black, as I've told you before. After a certain age, you want to watch the cream and sugar. We are now in the fourth week of September, in which the church calendar commemorates many great saints, like, for example, the first female martyr, Saint Thecla, equal to the Apostles, on September 24th, and Saint Sergius of Radonyr on September 25th. But who will I choose to reflect on today before I go to work? Saint John, the theologian, the beloved disciple of Christ, the evangelist, commemorated on September 26th. But before I continue about St. John, I'd like to address a question that might be on everyone's mind, and that is, who are the saints? Is this a special category or class of people unlike the rest of us? Or are all of us saints in a sense? After all, the Apostle Paul calls even the Corinthians chosen saints, despite their disorders and quarrels. The thing is, the term saint is used in different senses in the Church. In one specific sense, the saints are those who have officially been canonized or recognized as models of a, saint, a saintly life, models for imitation. But in another, more general sense, the term saint, saintly, or holy, agios in Greek and sanctus in Latin, means belonging to God, that which has been dedicated or given over to the divine. In the church, all the baptized are thus dedicated through baptism and are thus saints. In both senses, in any event, both the specific sense of canonized saints and in the sense of all of us, the baptized, saints are partakers of sanctity and not its source. The source of sanctity or holiness is one, and that one is God. So when in the Byzantine liturgy, before the distribution of Holy Communion, we hear the words, holy things for the saints, or holy things for the holy, in Greek, ta agia tisagis, or in Slavonic, svetaya svetim, this literally means the things of God for the people of God. Now, are the people of God perfect? No, only God is perfect. But a saint, while being an imperfect human, does not lose sight of his or her belonging to God, no matter what. This person's point of reference, so to say, is God, not the self. So the saint leads a life of constant metania, or repentance, the changing of the mind, or movement of the mind and will towards God. So you see, it is about constant progress, not constant perfection. Getting back to St. John the Theologian, he is believed to be the author of the fourth gospel and is often depicted with an eagle symbolizing the heights of theology to which he rose, particularly in the first chapter of his gospel. He was the youngest of Christ's disciples, the son of Zebedee and Salome, and the brother of the apostle James. Zebedee and his sons were fishermen, who fished in the lake of Gennesaret in Galilee, which is in the north of the Holy Land. James and John were first the disciples of John the Baptist until Jesus called them, soon after he called Peter and Andrew. John is known as the disciple whom Jesus loved, on ephili o Jesus, a term used five times in the Gospel of John to indicate authorship. The two brothers, James and John, held a prominent position among the apostles, and Jesus gave them the nickname 
Boan Erges, which is said to mean sons of thunder. This perhaps is not meant in an entirely flattering sense, but rather indicates the overly zealous and even overly ambitious disposition displayed by the two brothers, John and James, the future pillars of the church, when they were young disciples of Christ. For example, the Gospel of Luke tells us how when Christ and the disciples were once denied lodging in a Samaritan village, James and John helpfully suggest sending fire from heaven to destroy the entire town. Jesus rebu rebukes them for this. The Gospels also report that a dispute arose among the disciples on who among them was to be called the greatest, and that James and John were at the heart of the dispute with their request to sit at the right and left hand of Jesus in the kingdom of heaven. Nonetheless, John was the only disciple who remained by Jesus' side during his passion, when Jesus entrusted him with the duty of caring for his mother, Mary. John first preached the gospel in Judea until the repose of Mary, the mother of God, until her, her dormition. After that, according to tradition, he went to Ephesus in Asia Minor, and from there wrote his three epistles. Eventually, he was banished by the Roman authorities to the island of Patmos, where he is believed to have written the Book of Revelation, or the Apocalypse. St. John the Theologian is said to have died near Ephesus at a very old age, but some accounts say that when his grave was opened after his death, he was not there. You see, it has been believed that St. John never died, but that he lives until the second coming of Christ. This belief exists because of the following passage in the Gospel of John. It involves a conversation between Peter and Jesus. In this passage that occurs right after Christ tells Peter how he will end his life, Peter is curious about John. So the passage says, Peter, seeing him, John, said to Jesus, Lord, and what about this man? Jesus said to him, If I want him to remain until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. In other words, Jesus says, Mind your own business. You follow me. So, let's focus today on this concept of minding our own business and on these words of Christ said to Peter, You follow me. We may often be tempted to concern ourselves with other people's affairs, with their journeys in life, or to compare ourselves with other people. Even the apostles, as we have seen, were tempted to argue among themselves who among them should be called the greatest. When we are thus consumed with comparing our own lives, our own journeys or accomplishments with other people's, perhaps with the amount of money they have made or we make, with the grades other people get in school, perhaps with their talents or gifts, over which we, of course, have no control. The Gospel basically tells us, don't live a comparative life. And Jesus Christ puts our worrisome thoughts about other people to rest, saying simply to each of us, I've got all that. You follow me. And that's our thought for the day and our saint of the week, St. John the Theologian, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you very much.